Well, one of my subscribers and a fellow YouTuber, WatchUp69, who comes from that strange land across the water where they drive on the wrong side of the road and drink warm beer, asked me to do a video on the gear I carry while I'm out ATV riding. And uh, bit on my camera setup. So rather than take up time where I should be out riding, I'm going to do this out here in the Fleming Spit parking lot while I'm resting up from my last ride. Go into different stuff. I'll start out with what I actually carry on me. I wear a jacket to keep from getting brush whipped. That hurts. And I got a requirement for a jacket. It's got to have plenty of pockets that either button down or zip shut. But now we'll go into what I'm actually wearing on my person. And then we'll go into what I carry in the cargo box and stuff on the bike. Okay, one pocket I got my handheld video camera. This is a JVC Evario Waterproof, shockproof, kind of big and heavy, but it's very handy. Got a great zoom lens. There's the little uh, fold up stand for it. Unscrew that, and the feet come out comes in very handy for action shots and stuff. This is my emergency locator beacon. Send, push the button on this, sends a signal up to a satellite, gives my location, says the old farts in trouble, come and get them. Also sends out a radio directional signal so they can zoom in on me and has a strobe light. Never had to use it. Hope I never have to. There's the Garmin uh, Oregon GPS. So oh, I can get a location Because the emergency locator beacon is only to be used in extreme emergencies, like I'm going to die if you don't get here. For little stuff, I can use a cell phone, give a GPS location with the Garmin, call that in. Also comes in handy for when I'm finding trails and backtracking and stuff like that. The Garmin eats batteries, so I carry a couple of spare. I also wear one of these Casio GPS watches. There's a backup for this because the Casio is solar powered, has great battery life. Not as handy, it doesn't have mapping or stuff like that, but uh, it does, comes in pretty handy most of the time. A couple of trail bars for when you're not carrying a sandwich or something. Never know what's going to happen, so always carry something. Little pocket first aid kit. Handle this most minor stuff.
One of these windproof, waterproof lighters. Not just for starting fires, you can burn the end of a line so it doesn't unravel and stuff like that. Emergency whistle with one of these keychain flashlights. Not a very big beam, but uh, it's bright. You can shine it at a plane or something. Low pressure tire gauge. I use this all the time so I carry it in my pocket so I ain't got to fungle around in the toolbox trying to find it. Fully charged cell phone. Always have that with you. So, for minor stuff, you can call for somebody to come drag you out. Notebook and a pen. I'm always, you know, writing down a position or something if I want to get back to because, you know, GPS might go dead, the batter, uh, might lose a position or something, you know, all that good stuff. But if you write it down, you're not going to lose it. And I got the pistol strapped on. Better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Lots of big critters out here want to stomp on you or eat you or something. Never had to use it. Hope I never do. And I got one of these multi-tools strapped on. You can... There's all a bunch of different makes out there. This is a Stanley. Very handy to have with you all the time. Yeah, one of the things I forgot to mention is always carry a good working knife. Something you can open one-handed. Preferably with a partially serrated ledge. Comes in handy for cutting wires and lines and stuff like that. Carry whatever you want. But Keep it on you. They use it more than you'd think. Okay, so that's the stuff I was carrying actually on my person. What I carry on the bike on the Honda Foreman. I got some water. Two liters of it. This one I keep strapped on the rack. This one I usually throw in the cargo box. Now, the reason I use this one on the rack instead of this one or both of them is uh, this is you know just it's an old soda bottle and it's plastic so it doesn't rattle the tie downs keep it in pretty good. This thing likes to rattle or metal slides around rattles. Put that in the cargo box. Got some rain gear top and bottom. Never know when the weather's going to change around here. Got the bush knife Hat comes in handy for whacking off limbs on the trail. And the Swede saw for the bigger stuff. Fold up shovel. Old GI shovel I got back in the 60s when I was in the service. never know when you're going to have to dig something out, which I've had to do a couple times. Tool bag. 
every tool you'd need to do minor repairs on the wheeler flat tire kit little air pump bunch of tools and odds and ends I like the bags rather than a tool box you can stuff more stuff in a bag and you can crunch it down fill up odd spots this is a kind of an emergency kit it's got a bunch of different odds and ends in it there's the flare gun if I got a signal anything toilet paper a lot of people don't think about that fire starting kit waterproof matches throw away lighter some uh, fire starter sticks little emergency flashlight there's a little medical kit you got some uh, ace bandage in there and you just got a strap a uh, bandage on a little dental floss in case you got to sew something up signal mirror very handy old army surplus poncho not just for rain gear can build a shelter out of it folds up nice and flat fits in the box in the bag the bag itself picked up for a dollar at the Salvation Army thrift store doesn't take up much space crunches down very handy one thing I forgot to take out which you always carry around here is your bug dope the most vicious critter around here is the Alaskan mosquito so that's what I actually pack into that cargo box okay and here's my camera setup this is a pretty standard dirt bike helmet this one happens to be a scorpion model okay, you got the GoPro Hero 7 black on a chin mount there's the microphone adapter microphones inside there there's a my old contour plus two camera doesn't need a mic adapter so it just goes inside I wear this because the GoPro has a lousy battery life as anybody can, got them can tell you that's a pain to change the battery you gotta take it out of the case take it out of the, out of the uh, camera fumble in your pocket for the spare battery and I do carry a spare battery for it so when I'm not needing uh, an action shot on the bike walking around or something else use the contour great battery life no image stabilization but it still takes good pictures unfortunately the company's out of business and of course I got my gloves and goggles in there for everything else one thing you gotta remember when using these cameras is have them both set at the same settings makes things easier when you're doing your editing and uploading to YouTube so they're both set at 
1060, or 1080, 60, or 1080, 30, 60, 60, I forget what it is. Anyway, they're both up there, high res. Then YouTube cuts them down. So that's it on the, the camera and the gear. As far as the wheeler, it's pretty much stock. I got the manual shift on this. Because I just don't trust electronics. I want something I can kick. The only things I've done. I put these uh, bark busters on there and I put grip, grip heaters on for when it's cold and this cargo box. See a lot of guys put the humongous big cargo boxes on there where stuff just bounces around in there. You need one just big enough so you can fit your stuff in and not any bigger. It does have a worn winch on there. I forget what size it is. It's a 1,200-1,500 pound winch. And this is the electric power steering model, which is very nice. Good thing about these Hondas is when the power steering goes out, you still have manual steering. It's uh, an electric assist. It's not total power steering. So I'd, I've had the electric steering go out one time when it overheated, and you can still go back to the truck on manual steering. It's after being spoiled, feels lousy, but uh, it's no worse than the old rigs didn't have any power steering. And that's the whole rig. Nothing special. Nothing special again about the gear. Uh, might as well go on about this ramp. This is what they call a trifold ramp. Solid deck. When you get a ramp, you want one as long as you can get it. As long as you can fit into the back of the truck. Reduces the angle when you're going up and down. Now the reason I like these uh, trifold ones you can see if I can unfold this one handed now this is the solid deck trifold model you see it's got these knobbies on there grip your tires and this is a really good one it's got the welded aluminum hinges a lot of them got uh, rubber hinges, they tend to break up. But you can walk up and down this with a solid deck. If you got one of them ones, it's uh, like a ladder, they're dangerous walking up and down. You can slip through, break a leg. Something like that. Also running the wheeler up this is easier than running a ladder. You don't buck on it as much. It just goes up. So that's pretty much it. Oh, the, the tie downs. A lot of people use these uh, pull tight straps. And I don't like them, they can wiggle loose. So I use these ratcheting straps, they're a lot stronger, a lot more reliable. This thing doesn't move.
but just for safety's sake, I stuck an old tire in front of it, just in case I hit the brakes hard and it comes through the windshield. Down there, got a piece of 2x4 tire block, so I can pull up on there and it stays pretty solid. Now most guys that do ATV and a lot, they know all this kind of stuff. So this is just for the people that don't know much about them and figure you just get on and ride. Got to take a few little precautions, get a, get a little bit of gear. And that's it. I'll give a link to Watch Up 69's channel down in the description. Check him out. He's got a site for all the watch collectors and stuff, which I'm not much of a collector, but I am an enthusiast. Have a good time on the trail.